All right, so now what we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and do these window mullions. Um, and then we'll, uh, we're still waiting for the carpet to dry a little bit here. So I want to do these window mullions while we're waiting. And uh, I'm going to use a little trick here. Kind of hold my hand up on a separate brush. And I am just using pure burnt umber this time. Um, I have it, I have a little bit of water. I'm just using pure burnt umber this time. I have a little bit of water, a lot of pigment. So it's uh, in the papers dry in this area. And what I'm going to try to do is paint the mullion that's inside the room dark. And again, I'm just using a, a chisel brush, and it's a pretty stiff brush, so I can get a uh, fairly straight and crisp line. Okay, and then any part of the mullion that I believe is in the room, I'm going to go ahead and keep dark. And then what I'm going to do is go back and add a little bit of yellow ochre. Oops, that's all right. Remember, very forgiving media. Take a paper towel, pick up any pigment that you don't like. I'm actually going to leave that little bit of brown. I'm going to leave that little bit of brown there, just kind of blend it in a little, because we want to go back and add something in the windows anyway. All right, so now I have to wait for that to dry before I could really crispen that line up. But I might not actually leave it because it kind of goes with this um, shape that's happening here, which uh, again, happy accidents work really well when you're doing a watercolor illustration. So I'm going to go back and grab a little more of my. straight up burnt umber. Got a little wider line here, so this will be a little easier to do. And again, don't worry about being too perfect. Um, we're going to go back when this is over and we can add a little more line weight. Um, use a very sharp line with either a tech pen or a very, very fine brush just for a little bit of detail work. Okay. Let's see, a little more in there, a little more in there. Again, fine detail work you can really get in and uh, just, you know, take your time with it and seeing where maybe there needs to be a little more color or a little more spread of color. So while I'm working with this dark brown, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this dark brown and add into the shading of the pillows. All right. And now as I don't want that to be quite so harsh, I'm just going to add a little bit of water over top. And again, you take something that was a, a very harsh line and you could soften it up just by adding a little bit of water to it. And then again, we're bringing some of those same, we're bringing some of the same pigments down from other areas. All right, and as I'm doing this as well, kind of want to just smooth out that line a little. Smooth that line out a little. Okay. Now what we have to do is we do have to let this brown dry completely because what I want to do is go in with a little bit of my um, yellow ochre. And again, with a, a fairly dry brush, um, not a lot of water, but a lot of pigment, what I'm going to do is go in and just kind of add a little bit of yellow ochre to where the sun would be coming in from the exterior and highlighting part of this window mullion. Okay, so now what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, illustrated the 
wood table and basically I just took some of the browns that I was using, created a wood tone, washed it across the top leaving a little bit of white to show maybe a little bit of reflected light. Then underneath I just did a little bit of the brown and then I went back with the black and the violet and I added some dark values uh, really to make it kind of pop out from the background. Um, also I went ahead and I did the baseboard because that's just a few simple strokes of uh, a wood tone mixed with a little bit of black and some violet uh, to really get some of the shading effects. So now that I have these wood items completed let's go ahead um, and finish off these window mullions. There's that uh, one to hit with a little bit of just pure yellow ochre and I want to kind of give an illusion that a little bit of sun is hitting on the inside pieces of these mullions. Okay. So again, I'm just using a dry brush, mostly pigment, a little bit of moisture. And you are going to have to play with this a little bit to make sure it's not too runny. Because if you get too much water, you've seen what happens, it'll bleed and blend. Uh, but I just want to kind of hit, hit this inside area with a little bit of yellow ochre. And again, using a chiseled brush, um, you could of course use a fine tip brush if you wanted to. Let me get, let me see how that would work. Again, you really want a lot of pigment and just a little bit of moisture. And you can go ahead and go in and, and sometimes you need a little more moisture, so you want the paint to, to move. As you want it to move, you just don't want the paint to bleed. Now, again, I like using a, uh, a thin chiseled type brush for this type of effect because it's very easy for me to control. Once these mullions and this woodwork is completely dry, we'll go back and we'll just kind of add a little bit of maybe some blue, some gray, a little bit of streaks to show a, um, a glass or a reflective type surface. Maybe again, mix in a little bit of the colors that are in the room, uh, just lightly here and there. All right, uh, let's go ahead now and do the wood floor. And while I'm doing the wood floor, since I've already done the tabletop in this color, we're gonna continue this color wood. We'll also do the legs of these different pieces of furniture. So for this wood, I'm using primarily burnt umber. Again, I am using a little bit of yellow ochre with it, not as much as before. Now, um, if you have created the wood floor in perspective, um, it'd be great if you went ahead and you had the, the lines in place. I don't have those on this particular one, so I'm just going to kind of follow the vanishing point. Um, and again, I didn't add them mainly because this carpet takes up a majority of the floor that we're seeing. So I only have to do a little bit of wood floor, so I wasn't overly concerned. I am going to follow the shape of the carpet right here you know, which uses the vanishing point. Um, and what I want to do is I don't want to be too consistent with the color. I'm going to come back in and touch some of that up. Uh, and if this is a wood plank that's coming from a vanishing point, I'm just going to kind of follow it out. Use some different strokes, maybe some different widths, leave a little bit of white space. All right, so now I'm going to go back in with some water and let this blend a little bit. 
because of that, uh, the, the pigment that we put down before um, came off with uh, just a little bit of water. And now when we add water over the pigment, we can get some nice blending and sh natural shading effects. And again, don't overwork it. You don't want it all to be the same color. And I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit here, a little more water. There we go. All right. Now we're going to let that dry completely. So while we're letting this dry, I'm just going to spread that around a little more. While we're letting this dry, we'll go ahead and work on the wood that is on the furniture. Now, I'm sure you've already seen this, but there's a piece of uh, arm that wasn't painted earlier. We will go ahead and uh, might as well touch that up while we're here. And uh, that is a little bit of red mixed with burnt sienna. I'm just going to get a little bit going there. Okay. All right. So we're going to let that dry as well. Now let's back, get back to our the legs on our furniture. Uh, we're going to use the same color we used for the wood, for the table, for the floor. And then again, once this floor is dry, we'll go in and we'll touch it up. So we're primarily using burnt umber mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre and uh, let's go ahead and we'll just add some some pigment in here and I'm just using the tip of the brush you know if you really want to use a very very fine line brush you're welcome to do that Using the tip of the brush, I'm not going to be overly concerned. I'm just going to try to stay a little bit within the lines. Uh, we're going to go back and add a little darker value. Okay, just get some base color there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my mixture of violet, black, with my wood tone, and on the edges that are maybe farthest from the light. Go ahead and add a little bit of that dark pigment. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look like there's some shading effect happening. All right, and that is the wood legs. Now that this is starting to dry somewhat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, add a little bit of my dark color right along the edge of the carpet. That is mostly pigment. So I'm going to take a uh, take my brush, rinse it off, a little bit dry, and I'm just going to pull these strokes forward. Now, if you're noticing what it's doing, it's giving a little bit of a natural wood grain as you pull the pigment forward. Don't want to overdo it. You don't want it to look too much like line work. And if it's a little too much like line, go back with a little bit of water, smooth it out. All right, and then we just kind of give the impression that we have a little bit of a wood grain effect on our floor. Uh, plus we're giving a little bit of a shaded effect. where that edge of the carpet is overlapping the wood floor. Another very good technique that you could use, you take a brush and kind of get the edges of the brush a little ruffled up so there's some texture there. Grab a little bit of pigment on the brush. So there's not a lot of pigment there, just a little bit on the brush kind of separate the bristles out and you could do a few little streaks like that and
and it creates a little bit of a, a texture like a wood grain. Okay, they also have um, a brush called the fan brush that works very well for that as also. So I'm just going to leave that alone now and we'll just uh, say that we're pretty much done here with the wood floors. Alright, now that everything's dry, what I want to do is work on the window. To do that, I want to add some streaks to make it look like glass, but I'm also going to let a little bit, I'm also going to add a little bit of color to the exterior to maybe make it look like there's a little bit of plant life right outside these windows. Uh, to do that, what I've done is I have a little bit of dark green, some yellow, and uh, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre on my palette, and I'm going to grab a little, got a dry brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre all at the same time, and I'm just going to dab. Not going to be very precise, I'm just going to dab Do a little bit more of each, just kind of dab. Then I'm going to grab a little bit more of just the dark green, kind of dab, make it look like there's some shaded effects. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do for plant life. Now I'm going to add a little bit of blue. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue from my palette. Take a little bit of blue, a lot of water, because the blue goes a long way. And I'm going to kind of do maybe just a little bit of a vertical stroke. I'm going to do... Um, a little bit of a vertical stroke, a little bit of a diagonal. Not going to be consistent. Just maybe a little bit uh, outlining the edge of the glass. Same thing over on this side. I want it to outline the edge of the glass a little bit, maybe outline the top a little, do some diagonal strokes. And then what I can do is I can go in with a little bit of water if I want to spread that out. I can absorb some if need be. And there you have a glass effect. Okay, so what I've done is I've just given a little bit of an indication of artwork and uh, whatever you do in here, um, I would try to keep it abstract unless you actually have a real piece that you're copying and then copy it as perfectly as possible. Then what I've done is I've taken a little bit of the blue like I took over in the window and I just applied a little bit of a blue streak just to indicate maybe that there's a little, that there's glass on top of this, if there is, um, or just to indicate that there's a little bit of glass possibly on top of this. The illustration is now pretty much complete. What I want to do is just go in and fine tune some of the shading and some of the details. Um, also add a little bit more highlight into some areas. You could tell we've left some highlight by leaving the paper white in a few spots, but what I want to do now is go in with a little bit of white paint and um, add a little bit more detail to the highlights. If white paint came with the tubes in your watercolor kit, make sure that you're using it straight out of the tube. Uh, this is also a time where you could use your fine tip 
brush, so you could use a fine tip brush. Really make sure it's it's uh, go in, just add a little bit of white highlight on some corners where sun where light is hitting. Or anywhere you need to really kind of punch out a shape from a shape behind it. Now if you have a lot of pen and ink lines, you probably don't want to try to cover those up. So maybe keep within those. Like I have a little bit of highlight on the back here, uh, but want to add a little bit of highlight in here. A little bit of highlight on top of that pillow as well. So you don't need a lot. You just, you know, it's a little touch here, a little touch there. Um, it's kind of outline with white a little bit. You again, you want to use primarily the white paint, very, very little water. Like for example, I want to make sure that that arm sticks out a little bit from the back. I've got some spots here where we could highlight the front. Highlight the top of this pillow just a little bit more. If you need to add a little bit of water to your white to, to thin it out, um, you know, add a little bit of water, but dry your brush off a little bit on the side. You know, really try to get the intensity of the white. Um, watercolor is in general transparent. Once it's applied, the white is opaque. So just a little bit of highlight here and there, just to kind of touch it up. Okay, uh, that's just some general tips for working with watercolor. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, again, if there's anything in the watercolor that you want to change once the watercolor has been completed, it's very easy to do. You can wet a brush. Uh, for example, if you find an area is just too dark for your liking or you want it to blend a little bit more, um, you could easily just wet your brush, apply a little bit of water to an area, and scrub that area a little bit. Then you could take a paper towel or a dry brush and pick up some more of that pigment. So again, a very easy medium to work with and hope you have a lot of fun uh, practicing and playing with it. One thing I would like to do on this carpet, I'm going to take a little bit of white on a brush, a little bit of water, a little bit of white. Again, remember the white is opaque. Um, I don't want this to be too opaque, so I want it to be a little more uh, translucent because the white won't be completely transparent. And I just want to add a few little white streaks on top of this carpet. Just to really emphasize that it is a uh, white area rug. So again, the white won't be completely transparent. Um, it will be a little bit opaque and it will cover up, but it's a great way to, to sharpen up some of these edges. All right, so now as we're looking at this, let's just see if there's any place where we need to add a little bit more line work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my chisel point brush, which is now well stained with pigment. And that will happen with any white brush, so don't worry about your white brushes uh, staying white. They will change color with whatever colors you use, um, but they will always be clean. Wash them with soap and water, and you'll have a nice clean brush. Now what I'd like to do is just take a little bit of black with a little bit of water, so it's primarily pigment, with my chisel point brush, and I just want to see if there's any line work that I want to emphasize. So for example, I'd like to, to maybe sharpen that area where this cushion is sitting on top of the frame, and uh, just add that little dark shadow right there. And then since I did that there, I might as well do the same thing in here. Okay, 
And again, since I did it there and in here, might as well do it over here as well. Don't be afraid to move your hand around so that it works with what you're drawing. All right, so I also wanna put a little bit of line down here. Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of a broken line. Do the same thing here and do the same thing here. And since you did it there, do the same thing here. All right. Now what I also wanna do is take a little bit of the black, a little bit of water, and right in here where the cushions come together, just add a little bit of shadow, where the pillow sits on top Add a little bit of shadow right at the base. And then where the pillows overlap, add a little bit of shadow right along the edge of the pillow. And the shadow will help tie the pillow to the piece of furniture. So it doesn't look like it's just floating on top of it. All right, and since we have this pillow that overlaps a little, I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow on the arm there, just to touch. And then, let's see, could put a little bit of black back here to outline these shapes. Okay, and so you can kind of keep playing like that. Uh, wherever you see a spot where it looks like you could use a little bit more shade or shadow, don't be afraid of getting dark. Let's see. As we keep working with this, we could keep finding areas that we'd like to add a little more highlight. You could, of course, use your white paint. You could use a white water soluble pencil. Um, you could use a white oil pastel once everything is completely dry. Uh, the paint with a, a good, good brush works really well and again you could just go in and touch some areas show a little highlight Let's see I'll separate this piece and then if you ever need to blend your white you certainly can grab a little bit of water and touch that edge of the white and blend it around so it's not quite as opaque All right, so now that we've completed this particular illustration, I hope you've learned a little something and can have some fun playing with watercolors and um, trying different watercolor techniques.